Okay, so hi everyone and welcome to week two of the UCF Academy work. Uh, this session is going to be slightly different from the one that we did previously. Um, we're just going to go through some of the positions. Um, let me know if you've done the work. If you haven't had a chance to do it, don't worry, but it'll be good for me to know. I thought I was going to start with the level two positions, uh, but if you are struggling with any or you have any questions, then do let me know. I'm happy to help. Um, with the level one, but I think we'll jump straight into level two. Um, I'll share my screen with you so that you can see. Just letting some more people into the meeting. So, okay, so this is um, page number uh, four of the booklet, and this is week two. So we're going to be looking at the porn and game puzzle set um, in the session now. I'm uh, just letting a few more people in. But well done, you guys, for getting here on time. I like people that arrive on time. <laughs> okay, so um, there were some easier puzzles there. I'm not going to go through these, but if anyone wants to ask me um, something that they don't understand, please do, and I'd be very happy to help. Um, but what I thought we'd do is we'd go through the level two questions. Um, some of you might have had a chance to have a go at them. Some of you may not have had a chance, which is okay. Um, we can do them in the session. Um, I'm going to put a timer on. I'm going to give you three minutes for each question. But today I want you to privately message me your answer. So that if somebody's still thinking about it, um, they, you're not giving away the answer. So hopefully everyone understands that. If anyone accidentally writes it to everyone, it's fine. I don't have a problem with that um, at all. And the idea of these King and Pawn end games is to get familiar with some of the concepts. So um, these positions here, there's a lot of things to think about. Uh, firstly, the opposition. Um, secondly, whether your opponent will get a queen with check or maybe you'll get a queen with check um, because that changes the result um, sub substantially in some positions. Um, the idea of body check or shielding, which is when you use your king to block your opponent's king out of the way. And the other thing is um, when you promote to a queen and your opponent promotes to a queen, if you can skewer the queen um, in one or two moves, and um, that can lead to a win in these end games. So these are important things that you need to be aware of and you need to think about when you're going through these games rather than just guessing the first move that looks good because that doesn't usually uh, work or not in these anyway. <laughs> so um, just going to make sure it's all ready. Okay, so any questions before we start or should we get going? I'm going to start with the level two questions. And um, obviously it said just work for it until you get to the level that you're happy with. So those of you that have had a chance to go through them, you might find these really easy, but I'll try and talk through some of the concepts as well. Um, so I'm going to start the timer on the first question. I don't just want the first move. You have to give me detail. Um, so try and write as much detail as you can. And um, if I find I'm not giving you enough time, then I can increase the time. So don't feel rushed by it. And this is uh, level two, question one. So let's get started. It's white to play and win. Um, you don't necessarily have to write the whole solution down to checkmate, but you need to give enough detail um, and explain why it's a winning position. So please just write in the chat. Try and write it privately to me, please. Thank you. And the idea of these sessions is anyone that wants the interaction. Uh, they were very, the other one I did was very popular, so I decided to do some more. Uh, and I guess you've got more motivation to do the work if you know it's going to be a session based on the work. So I've had good answers through from Charlie and Marcos, so thank you. Um, yeah, try and write them privately if possible. And I'll wait for a few more people and then we will go through and I'll go through the most common mistake as well. <coughs> and don't be shy to ask any questions you have when I'm going through the answers. Yeah. 
Yeah, well done, Adam S and Audrey as well. Who is APMB? <laughs> Please change your name so I can identify you and then I can see who's attending these sessions. Um, Yeah, good Katie, good Arian. And good Bodhana. So that's what happens left, and then we'll go through the answer. What's the weather like where you guys are today? It's absolutely boiling here in Cheshire. <laughs> So hot today. Maybe summer's here at last. Uh, just letting Gonzalo in. Okay, so the time is up. And um, for the benefit of Gonzalo, who's just joined, um, we are just going through the questions from level two. So I'm putting a timer on, and people are privately messaging me their answer. Um, and if anyone's got any other questions, please don't be shy. It is possible for you to unmute yourself if you want to just shout out which is fine but don't ask when the time is on while people are thinking okay great so I'm just going to go through this answer then and um, had some good answers through from a range of people so yeah king f2 um obviously when you first start playing chess you just think oh, i'll push my pawn and i'll get a queen but hopefully you guys will know that that just doesn't work um, and if you play d4 now it's just a draw and um, we can't get the king in front of the pawn and black can get a draw. So we need to not rush and use our king first. King is the most important piece in the end game. So king f2, king g6, king e3, king f5. And now in this position, if you were to play d4, you're throwing away the win because black can move the king back and white does not get the winning position, which is having the king in front of the pawn with the opposition. So hopefully you're familiar with this being a draw. The only move here uh, to win is to put the king on d4. And the idea here is just, well, basically to create a path for your pawn. You use the opposition to force your opponent's king in one direction, and then you can easily create this path. And there's just no point rushing by moving the pawn forwards. You've got to get the king into place first. So everybody that messaged me their answer there got that correct. So well done. Like I say, don't be shy to ask questions. You can either unmute yourself or you can privately message me. But the whole point of this session is if anyone doesn't understand something, then they can ask me. So don't be shy. OK, this one I quite like. So this is a must know position and it's white to play. And it's the kind of position that loads of people would rush and draw. So. I'm going to play the first couple of moves, I think, because I think these are kind of obvious moves that most people would play anyway, right from beginner um, without thinking about it. So king f7, um, obviously we're just trying to win this pawn and get a queen. So king c2, king e7, king c3, um, king d7, king c4. Okay, so let's just go from this position. White to play. Uh, what should white play here, please? And I'm going to just give you a minute for this one because I feel like it's slightly easier. And try and tell me why. Uh, I mentioned some of the concepts at the start. This is a very important end game concept to be aware of. Uh, thanks, Aidan and Audrey. Excellent, Charlie. Nice explanation.
yeah, so privately message me your answer if you want to. Good, excellent, Aidan and Marcos. Okay, so the mistake people would make in a game here would be to just go king c7, assuming that this is winning. But after king c7, um, it's not anymore. It's now a draw and black can draw this position with king c5. I think king d5 also draws, but I think king c5 is the easiest way to do it. And now when you go to um, b7 to take this pawn, the king goes to d6. And the whole point here is you need to be able to meet king takes a7 with king c7. And if you know that that's a draw, which I know and hopefully some of you know, then um, you're just aiming for that and that's completely drawn. There's no way um, white can make any progress despite being a pawn up um, here. So with that knowledge in mind, um, you need to stop the king from getting closer. And this idea of king c6, it's called shielding, stopping the king, oops, <laughs> stopping the king from getting to these squares. Uh, I like to call it the body check as well, which uh, Endgame guru um, Carsten Muller uses as a phrase. So it's like the body check, so it stops your opponent's king from getting there. And basically, black doesn't have a useful move here. Whereas if you go to c7, um, black has a useful move um, by playing king d5 or king c5. So. It's very important to stop your king from your opponent's king from getting through. And just that one tempo is the difference between a win and a draw. So, you know, if you've been playing for a few hours and you're tired, it's very easy just to play king c7 and assume it's winning. But if you've seen this idea before, then you'll know straight away that king c6 is the right move. And it's also a bit strange because obviously it doesn't really, it takes two moves to get, okay, one, two, three moves, sorry, to get there. But if you go this way, it also takes three moves. So it's not like maths and trigonometry and stuff. It's, it's the same distance. Um, but by going there and blocking your opponent's king out, um, then black is in, in trouble and loses. So hopefully you all understand that. Uh, well done if you got it right. And now let's move on to the next question. Now, this again is a must know position. So I don't want to give people much time on this. Um, so let's just do another minute for this one because I feel it's fairly straightforward once you know the answer. So white to play, what should white play here? Hi Ed, I don't know whether you had some connection problems, but we're just doing some questions from level two and then we're going to move to uh, level three. So people are just privately messaging me their answer. Um, this one I've only given them a minute for because I feel it's um, a must know position and fairly straightforward if you know it. Okay, some good answers coming through there. Couple of people getting it wrong, probably because they don't know this, but. That's what we're here for, to learn. So don't worry if you've got it wrong. So the only winning move here for white is pawn to g5, the only move that wins. And the idea there is if you have the knowledge that when the king gets to g6, it doesn't matter whose move it is. There's no opposition once you've got a pawn on the fifth rank um, and the king's in front. It's just that position is just a win no matter whose move it is if the king was on g6. So g5 just means that um, as the, well, let's just progress a few moves here. Um, should I play king f7, for example, king d7. Um, eventually you'll win the pawn because black can't stop you. And there's no kind of, um, what's the word? There's no sort of method of, well, it's okay because when they take, I get the opposition and it's a draw. That would be the case if all the pieces were um, moved back by one rank or two ranks or three rank ranks. Um, but here, it doesn't matter because you've got the pawn to the fifth rank. So that's winning no matter what. So um, there, that's a win. But if you, if you don't play g5 here and you go king e6, 
well, black just plays g5, and now it does matter about the opposition. So if we go king f5, for example, black just needs to be in a position that when white takes this pawn, black can meet it with king g7. So here, well, hopefully you realise that the, the moves to draw would be king f7 or king h7. Well, I guess here and here as well, just as long as you don't go to that square until they take the pawn, and then it's just a draw. Um, so... Yeah, if you're white, you need to play g5 to win. If you're black and it's your move, you need to play g5 to draw. Um, if you didn't understand that, don't worry. Um, it's one that you should probably play out to try and get the hang of, um, rather than just listen to me. Um, just got someone in the waiting room. Just let them in. So um, any questions there before we move on? It's fine if you want to ask questions. That's what we're here for. If not, don't worry. Or you can write it privately to me as well if you prefer. Um, if not, I'm just going to move on because there's quite a lot of content to get through. Okay, so next question. Um, this is quite similar to the previous position um, and it does use the opposition. Remember, when we take that pawn, because we've progressed our pawn to the fifth rank, it doesn't actually matter about the opposition anymore. So all we need to do is find a way of winning this pawn and we need to use the opposition to get there. So I'll give you just a minute for this question, because again, if you know it, I think it's fairly straightforward, or hopefully, if not, don't worry. So white to play, what should you play here? Um, for the benefit of those that have just joined, just privately message me your answer, please. And um, when the time is up, I'll go through the solution. Yeah, thanks, Aidan, Audrey. Um, looks good. Be careful, Marcos. Well done, Gonzalo. Charlie, good. I'm aware I've only really given you a little time here, but it's sort of there's only really two two moves here that look like they might be winning, and only one of them is winning. Um good. Daniel as well, welcome to the meeting. So yeah, King H5, we need to basically use the opposition to get over there. And now we just follow the black king and it's just winning because you get to a position where uh, here we can now progress with King E6 and black can't play King to C6. So we're going to win the pawn. And then we already know that when we win that pawn, the opposition doesn't matter because we've got our pawn to the fifth rank and that's going to be winning. Okay, and um, like I say, I'm happy to take questions, but other than that, I'm just going to move on because we've got lots of material to get through. Um, this is another must know. So um, white to play. White can draw this position, but there are a few important things you need to know. And this uses the concept of the, um, the opposition again, which is vitally important in king and pawn in games. So again, I think I'm only going to give you a minute for this one. Just need to give me the first move and then maybe explain why. And it's it's sort of, well, it's kind of a an interesting position, but it's just a must know. It involves the opposition. Okay, so people join in a bit late. It's fine. Yeah, Aiden, that's good. Charlie, that's good. Rest of you, have another look. I feel like once I go through this, um, it'll be fairly clear to you why. Um, hi, Kushal has just joined the meeting. We're just going through level two questions from week two of the academy, and we are. I'm giving you some time to privately message me your answer. Yeah, well done, Bodhana. And this is a must know. If you get a position like this in a game, you probably are going to be tired. You've probably played a lot of moves to get here. If it was an over the board game, you may have been playing for three or four hours. And to try and sort of work things out here um, would be more challenging. But if you know the position, you understand the concepts, then it's you, know, you can play it instantly without worrying. OK, my time is up and um, we just need to move the king to d1. And the idea here is a bit of prophylactic thinking thinking about what your opponent's doing. 
if the king moves to uh, d4, we can meet that with d king d2, which is a draw because we've got the opposition. Um, f4 doesn't help black. I won't explain why, but hopefully you know why. Um, if they go king to c4, we can, in this position, um, well, king c2 is, is the draw because of the same reason, so we'll go with that. But I think, I think we can go king e2 as well, which is also a draw. But this is just fine because we're still in the box to protect this pawn. And again, if we play f4, then we just go king d2 and it's a draw. Um, so the idea is to think about where your opponent wants to move to make progress. And then you just need to um, make sure you can get the opposition when the king gets there. And if they do a move like f4, then you can just... Um, move your king to e2 and it's a draw so you just come in for the pawn so like i say i am going fairly fast so if you want to ask questions just please do that okay oh yeah i like this position so this kind of builds on the concept we've been talking about and i like to play how do we win this position uh maybe just a minute for this one because a, a lot of you may have already done the questions. Yeah, and try and give me a little bit of detail. I think the first move is fairly obvious. And hopefully you're getting familiar with the idea when the pawn is on the fifth rank. Yep, yeah, some talk about outflanking from Marcos and Bodhana, that's good. Good, so we, we take the pawn and then we bring our king across and black cannot stop you from winning the pawn. And then because we've got progressed to the fifth rank, it doesn't actually matter that if white takes the pawn, we can get the opposition. But do remember if all the pieces were moved down one rank, uh, this would be a draw. But because it's on the fifth rank, um, this is winning no matter whose move it is. Okay, uh, moving on to the next question. Oh, yes, right. It's very easy to go wrong here. So you can tell me your answer quickly. <laughs> See if anyone goes wrong. White to play. What should white play? Imagine you've been playing a game for five hours and you get to this position and then you just quickly make a move and then you realise it's a mistake. It's painful. So make sure you're aware of this position. White to play. What should we play? Good, Aiden and Charlie. But Hana. And Dan and Gonzalo and Marcos. Nobody's given me the wrong answer yet. Well done, and Kushal. Okay, great. So uh, G6 would be a massive mistake because it's just a draw now. Um, up because of the stalemate trap. After King H8, you can't go King F7 because it's stalemate. Um, Brian, well done. But um, yeah, King F7, just an easy win now. Well, to be fair, I shouldn't say it was an, it is an easy win because I saw a 160 grade get this position and agree a draw because he thought, right, I can't go G6. How do I win? So he agreed a draw after a long think. Um, but if you just go King G6 and then come around this way, then that avoids the stalemate trap and it's a win. So it's not, it's not as simple. Um, as it seems, unless you've seen it before. 
And that's why it's very important to get familiar with these concepts and ideas, because when we get back to playing like slow play over the board chess, you might have been playing for a couple of hours and you'll be tired at this point. You don't really want to have to sort of learn this from scratch. You just want to know how to play it and win. So uh, well done if you got that right. And those are the level two questions. And now let's move on to the level three questions. And these are quite challenging. So I don't know if people um, got around to getting on with them, but we're going to do them now anyway. So this is um, this position here. Um, it is white to play. Now it's not just about the first move. Um, it's about some detail and some calculation. So when you play the end game, it's not guesswork. It's not just go for the first move that looks good. It's about trying to calculate right to the end. And that's what we're going to do now. So for this one, I'm going to give you three minutes because I do want some proper variations. And hi, Aaron, that's just joined. I think it's just connecting. Um, three minutes, there we go. And I'll move it up because I think, I've, yeah. Okay, let's go. Oh, hi, Aaron, we're just going through some of the questions. Um, we've, we've got to level three now. So if you just privately message me your answer when you've done it. So wait to play and find the win, but don't just give me the first move. I want some detail or at least an explanation at the end as to why it's winning for white. Good, Audrey. And hi, Rock, who's just joined the meeting. We're just going through the level three questions from week two of the ECF Academy. So just have a look at the position. Give me your answer privately as a message, please. Excellent, Ed. <laughs> That's the key point. Yeah, well done, Aaron. Don't worry um, for being late. I know you've got all sorts of commitments with it being the end of school and stuff, but thanks for joining. Uh, we just did the level two questions, so we're on the level three questions now. And uh, not everyone would have managed to get these done, but if you haven't done them already, you can do them in the class. And I said, if anyone's got any questions, please ask me um, because that's what I'm here for. And hopefully you'll find these sessions useful for anything if it's just motivation to make sure you've done the material before the lesson. Okay, so Charlie, well done. Aidan, well done. And yeah, Aidan's given a good explanation there. And Katie, well done. <laughs> yep, good, Gonzalo. Uh, Marcos as well. So this touches on one of the concepts I explained at the beginning, which was about skewers at the end. And it's something to always be aware of in King and Pawn End games. I remember one of my games in the British and there was a, a skewer at the end, so I lost because of that. But if I put my king on a different square, there wouldn't have been a skewer. So you've really got to make sure you're thinking about these concepts. Um, so yeah, e6. And not actually, not many people put king f6, but some of you did, so that's good. Um, king d6, g3, e7, g2, and now queen, queen. And the problem now for black is you can just go queen f8 and then you skewer the queen. But to see that right from the start is, is quite challenging. And you've always got to make sure that you're looking at the best moves for your opponent because obviously g3 is a more obvious type of skewer. And that's pretty easy to see from the start. But 
that does try and show some resilience by going king f6 and it doesn't help. <laughs> so yeah, well done if you got that right. Now we move on to the next question, although I've got it set up in the wrong position. Uh, sorry. So here it's white to play. And once again, you need to be looking for the best defences for your opponent. Don't play hope chess where you assume you'll, they'll make a bad move. So to get this correct, I want you to give me the best defences from black. And I think this is actually pretty hard. So if you've not looked at it before, then have a go now. If you've already looked at it, then just double check your answers. As I would say, this is pretty challenging. Okay, one move's not enough. Please give me some detail. So I'd say the first move's fairly obvious. Well, maybe obvious if you've been listening because you've obviously got to be aware of your opponent queening with check. Yeah, when you play games, you need to assume your opponent's really good. And if they if they play rubbish moves, then that's fine. I'm always happy to see my opponent play bad moves, but assume they'll play, play the best move in the position. So here you need some detail. After your first move um, and Black's first move, uh, you need to then tell me what White plays there. Um, kind of, Charlie, what would you play after B5? I need a move there for white, please. Some more people joining. Hi, Adam, and welcome back, Ed. I assume you're having some computer problems. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're just looking at question number um well we've got it chapter 26 on the study and it's white to play and find the best move but this is pretty difficult yeah that's fine just um give me the best answer you can and i think this is hard so if you're finding this challenging don't worry i mean king and pawn endgame should be so easy because there's so few pieces but i think they're really quite difficult and the problem is you do something wrong it's not like in a mid in the middle game against a weaker player you can kind of mix it up and make it tricky and then maybe get through the difficulties and win uh, here if you mess it up you mess it up and the result is final there's not really much choice even against an absolute beginner you could lose so um yeah some good answers come through so king g5 uh, i think that's probably obvious the first move because you want to get your pawn to the other side um, actually, I guess maybe it's not so obvious. You need to make sure you're putting it on um, a dark square so that when black eventually queens, he's not qu or she's not queening with check. So king g5 makes sense if you're sort of armed with that knowledge that you want to avoid uh, your opponent queening with check. Um, black, well, black's only real move now is b5. I didn't have many people tell me what white plays here. Um, a couple. So I'll just give you uh, a minute to privately message me what white should play here. Yeah, good. Some solutions coming through. Yeah, so hopefully you can work out that h5 is just not a good move here. 
Because you play h5, black just plays b4, and I'm not sure what you're achieving apart from just a completely drawn um, end game. It's just a draw. So you need to come up with something a bit more clever than that. And now we come to the move king f4, which um, people have told me, which is excellent. So this means that you're getting closer to black's pawn. And if black were to just push the pawn um, immediately here, like this, um, we can just play king e4. And you'll notice we're inside the box. And this is just going to be, um, well, if they push the pawn, then we can get inside the box. And if they move their king to e2, then we've got king d4. Again, just keeping in the range of that pawn. And after, I don't know, king d2 or whatever, just loses because the pawn drops. So these things are important. And you've got to think about stopping your opponent's pawn and getting your pawn through. Yeah, it's all about the square of the pawn, but Hano, well done. So king f4, and now, um, if I was black and I was you know, being resilient, which you should all be, um, king e2 would be probably the best move now. Um, just stopping white from um, stopping the black pawn. And then if white were to just push the pawn, it's a draw again for reasons we discussed earlier. Um, so white goes king e4. And it's very annoying for black. King d4, king, oh, sorry, king d2, king d4. And it's actually losing because now we can just go here. And Black's King is never able to get in this box. So this is about patience, really. It looks so tempting to just push your pawn and assume it's winning. But you have to take some time and think about what's going on. And the King can go here and it's completely winning. But it doesn't look like White could win this once you work out that both pawns queen at the same time. But with a little bit of thinking and knowledge, you can get to that solution. Uh, I think that's very hard. So I know I've gone for it quite quickly, but this is the kind of thing that if you've got um, a training buddy, you can play it out with. I know last time we did some training positions in the class and people played against each other. I think it's worth playing it out and um, maybe getting it wrong and then learning why it's wrong rather than just listening to me. Or maybe you've got someone at home you can play chess with or there's always Stockfish 8 as well. So I would try and play these positions out after the session. Um, yeah, it was white to move um, fork power mm -hmm. or forked as you are today. <laughs> right, let me just go to the next position that we're going to be looking at. And this is another one, white to play and find the best move. White to play. <laughs> so obviously in these positions, you should always look for the most obvious move and calculate that first. So the first thing you should be calculating is just what happens if I just push my pawn. Is that winning? And then if it is, you can stop or double check it and then stop and you can play the move. If it isn't, then you need to look for something else. So white to play. I've got two anonymous people looking at the study. <laughs> it's fine, as long as you're not looking at the answers. I forgot to put my timer on, sorry. It's a bit silly. Um, let me go for one, two, no. Two minutes, there we go. Because I've already kind of, I think you've already had about a minute. I just forgot to put it on. If you need more time as well, that's fine. Just let me know. Obviously, if I had this position in a game, I definitely spend a lot of time, even if I thought I'd worked it out, I just double check it and triple check it because they are complicated. And obviously you all know, once you make a move, you can't take it back. So it's worth investing the time. 
I know I'm not giving you a huge amount of time now, but some of you would have already looked at these at, at least briefly. Yeah, exactly, Gonzalo. It is similar to the last one. And once you've got familiar with these concepts, you'll realise they occur in lots of different endings. That's why uh, we wanted to get you familiar with these ideas. So yeah, just privately message me your answer when you've got it, please. Okay, good, Kusha. Have another look, Bodhana. It's a little bit more tricky than that. Yeah, good, Aidan. There's a little bit more detail required, but I think you've got the right idea. And does anyone want some more time? You can just write yes if you if you do. We haven't had many answers through. Okay, yeah, I'll give you a bit more time because these are complicated positions. Let's just give you another two minutes. Okay, can you tell me or give me a time? Put it this way. You give me a time. These are muted themselves. <laughs> In the afternoon. Yeah, all right. All right. Okay. Yeah, just make sure you're on mute unless you want to say something. Okay, so these aren't supposed to be easy, so don't worry if you haven't got it right or you haven't looked at it properly yet. I'm going to go through um, G4 first. That should be the first move that you consider um, in this position. It's not the right move, but I'm going to go through G4 first. Um, so G4, uh, I'll go down four powers line. Um, B5, B4, um, E6. <coughs> Um, B3 check, so that's annoying because obviously white just wants to push the pawn. Um, he's put king c3 here and um, b2, g7, queen, and then um, white queens. But in this position, um, I don't know, King A1? I, don't, I, don't, I think it's just a draw. Yeah, it's just a draw. Yeah, because I think sometimes when you're calculating these lines, you can um, you can accidentally sort of miss a move or something like that. 
So this doesn't work um, for those reasons. Where have I? I need to go back. So in even in this position here, you need to eliminate this because if this is winning, and um, this is what you need to spend the most time on. Now in my variation here, it's just um, yeah, there's just nothing you can do, and it's just a draw because both sides queen at the same time. Um, so then you can think, okay, this doesn't work, but my king is really well placed to stop black's pawn and to cause some annoyance. So what happens if I go king c3? Now that's annoying for black because if black goes b5, just king b4, and it's a win for white. So black then goes king a3, and then we keep going king c4, king a4. And now in this position, um, we've rather cleverly got the kings in the position we want them. So d4, b5 check. This time we go king d3, not king c3 because that enables black to um, move forward with check. If we go king d3, then it's very annoying because black can't push the pawn because we can bring our king back. So black has to waste a tempo on king a3. And now g5, um, b4, g6, b3, uh, g7, b2. And now white can play king c2. Now, remember what I said earlier, you need to, you want to queen with check. The only move black can play now is king a2 to support the promotion. But look what happens. Uh oh, it's check. And hopefully you guys will know that um, in this position, it's just winning. Um, if it was a C pawn or an A pawn, um, it can be a different story depending on the position, but now it's just winning. Um, and I suppose in this one, it's even more obviously winning because we can just go checkmate one. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is that is hard. I mean, to, to work all that out from the beginning is very difficult, but if you, um, sort it out into different um, kind of small chunks, a bit like when you're revising for something at school, you can first consider the most obvious move, realize it doesn't work, and then you can kind of think, okay, well, let's try king c3. I mean, it's the only other move that would win. So even if you can't work it out right to the end, then at least you can give it a go. And um, because you're forcing your opponent's king backwards, uh, it feels like you've made some progress. And then if you're just careful to put your king on the right square, remembering that you don't want to give your opponent an extra tempo if they can uh, make their uh, pawn move with check, and then go back. And also these positions, though, they might sound look a bit difficult now, but these patterns and themes, they occur all the time in games. And um, so once you've seen them a few times and got them um, into your head, then um, you'll find them more familiar. Uh, apparently someone's drawing my screen. I don't know. I'm not too worried. It's one blob. <laughs> but thanks for alerting me. Um, I don't even bother taking the settings off because you guys are a serious group. But okay, let me do that now. Um, disable annotations. And what can I do? I should have put name annotator. <laughs> uh, you guys are doing well. I know this is tricky, uh, but thanks for tuning in and listening and you can always go through because i'm recording this you can go through it again if you want to if you want some explanations right we've got 10 minutes left let me just remember how to get rid of these annotations not that it's much there we go done it okay so let me go back to this okay so the next position here is white to play and win and again it's, it's very hard this one so Let's see if you can work at least some of it out. And again, in these positions, you need to just look at the most obvious line first. And if you look at the most obvious line, then if it works, then you don't need to look any further. If it doesn't work, then you can apply some of the different ideas that you've learned over the years or you've learned um, in this session or before, and then it will all come together. So white to play, what should white play? Hopefully you can all find the first move and then and the details after that. Uh, let's give you three minutes for this. And these are meant to be challenging. So if you're a bit out of your depth now, don't worry. The more of these you do, the more you'll get used to them.
Yeah, good, Aidan. You've obviously been going through the work very methodically. And I think that's what we're trying to show. He's just written that it's, it's got some similar ideas to the last position. And these, these ideas, you know, they're not invented every time you have a game. They occur time and time again. So if you can get familiar with the key ideas, then you can apply them in your own games. Yeah, I know I'm rushing through these a, a bit quickly now, um, but we don't have much time left. But again, you can you can play these out with a training partner. I mean, you can buddy up with somebody on the call like people did last time. And I think that's a really good way to really understand them. Um, so one thing I will note here is quite a few people wrote King C3. Now remember, um, chess isn't like maths in terms of the king distance. The king going to C5, C4 or C3 is the same distance in terms of getting closer to black's pawn. So king c5 is the right move here. And that sort of makes sense because it paves the way for your pawn to promote and it also gets you one step closer to black's pawn. It's the same way as putting the king on c3 for black's pawn, but it's better for stopping black's king from coming over. Because if we go king c3, now I, I think black can just move the king back, surely and you can't body check or shield the king out. Um, thought power, have you got your hand up? If you have, you can just unmute yourself and ask. No, okay. Um, so here, um, yeah, king c5. So that does the multiple uh, like task of paving the way for this pawn and stopping black's king from getting across. Sarah? Yes? Why can't the pawn promote with check onto the c5 king? Um, so, sorry, I didn't hear that. Ha say that again. The pawn, when it promotes to g1, it can prom um, promote into a queen with check. That is true. That's a good point. So um, if black were to just move the pawn forward here, um, well, let's just look at the line and it should um, answer your question. But that's very, that's very good to sort of realise that. I actually wasn't thinking about that when I said it, but I know it's a winning move because I know why. <laughs> so let's just go through and then hopefully it'll answer your question. Um, so white now plays b4, and black goes g4. Now we go king d4. So our aim at the moment is just to get closer. So it, we're just not going to allow that to get the uh, pawn through. So g3, king e3, and now um, black, well, black's lost because king g5. And here in this position, uh, white to play, the only winning move. In fact, let's see if anyone can find the only winning move. Just tell me in the chat. You can write it to everyone if you want, because we don't have much time left. It's only one winning move here for white. Everything else is a draw. <laughs> um, yeah, well done, Katie, B5. Um, king F3 doesn't work because if you go uh, King F3 here, then uh, Black's king can actually get in this box. You've always got to think about the box. But by going b5 now, and um, obviously the king's role here is just to stop 
black from Queenie and now um, the king can't come this way uh, because he's not in the box anymore. It's too slow. Um, so yeah, again, these, these things are quite hard to understand. So if you're finding this challenging, don't worry at all. Um, it will, the more of these you do, the more familiar you'll get with it. Um, but there was a good point that Rock made at the start that Black and Queen would check, but we're not letting Black Queen in this variation. So that's why it doesn't really matter. Um, you've just got to bas basically use your king, firstly to stop um, Black's king from stopping your pawn, but also to stop your opponent's pawn. Um, there's a very, very famous Reti study on this. I don't know if you guys have seen it. You can let me know in the chat if you have. Um, which, yeah, I can send across to you if you want to see it. It's kind of a, an amazing position where, uh, oh, that's good, a few people have said they have. Yeah, it looks like it's impossible um, to win, but you can win. So I'll send that across, um, just if anyone wants to have a look at it. It shows all these ideas, but it's all based on the fact that um, moving diagonally or sideways with your king in chess is the same distance, even though obviously mathematically it's the longer distance if you were to measure it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is now winning. Um, in this position, though, uh, we don't obviously queen and allow black to queen with check. Uh, we just move our king to f2. And look what happens now, rock. Black has to move the king there, and we queen with check. <laughs> so um, that was pretty, pretty good. But again, this is quite challenging. But by learning these different concepts and building them up, then you can, um, you can do this and you can understand it. So if you found that too hard, uh, don't worry at all. There's a lot of difficult concepts there. Um, I might not go through the last two because we've kind of run out of time now. In fact, I quite like this. Let's just do this one because this is one of my favourite positions. So how does white win this position? I don't know if you've seen this before. I did miss out number 29. But let's just do this. Have a go at this. Now, remember, we don't want black to be able to exchange um, a pawn off for our H pawn because if black can do that, it's just a um, draw and we want to win so you can you can write your answer to everyone because we've only got a minute left so if you if you want to suggest white's move to everyone in the chat please do oh good good aiden now oh, you know your stuff the only winning move here is h4 um if black can get a formation where they can just exchange a pawn off uh white's pawn off it's just a draw so h4 and if black tries to go h6 to then get g5 in, what does uh, white play now? You can tell everyone in the chat if you want to. Yeah, h5, exactly. And if they go there, you can just take it on, pass on. So um, that's the only way you can win by playing h4. I think that's quite, quite nice. Um, if black were to play h5 now, then... <laughs> There's a pretty amazing move for white in this position, um, which, well, it's six o'clock now, so we'll have to stop in a moment, but this is pretty amazing move. So what's the only way to win for white in this position? And don't worry if this is out of your depth because it's challenging. Um, Aiden's got it already. So king f8. Now, the reason this works, um, as opposed to the obvious, just king f7 is probably the most obvious move here. Uh, black can just go g5. And now takes h4, g6, h3, and g7, h2, queen. And look, our king is in the way. So we're not queening with check. So don't let your king get in the way. Whereas imagine this position with the king on f8, which is if you go king f8 on your first move, um, that's amazing because now it's check. So this position is completely winning. So that is the difference between putting your king on one square and another. And like I say, I made a mistake like this in the British Championships um, many years ago. And it's, yeah, it's annoying <laughs> when that happens. So, but once you've seen these ideas, these concepts, you can build them up and um, apply them in your games. So we kind of looked at um, queening with check, um, the body check or shouldering, and skewers once you've promoted, outflanking, and sort of keeping your king open to um, helping your pawn, but also going for your opponent's pawn uh, in the end game. So I hope you found that useful. And um, I thought I'd put on some of these sessions this month um, because I'm not doing my classes now, it's summer holidays. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. 
And um, if you have any questions, you can send them across by email um, or you can privately message me or Alex on Lee Chess. And um, yeah, have a nice um, evening and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Thank you, Sarah. No worries, thanks. Thanks, bye.